Okay, <clears throat> it's time to uh, begin on Unit 16A. And so here we are. <clears throat> and a, uh, <clears throat> this is about oscillations. And this is a simple harmonic motion, just a picture of it. So over here on the left, there's a spring, mass on top, bounces up and down. And we have a position of the mass as a function of time. And what you make is one of these plots like we did really early on in the uh, course, where um, the motion goes up and down and up and down. This is the position, that's what we're recording. We looked at velocity, it's obvious it's going to be zero at the tops here, at the bottoms. And acceleration is going to be right, negative when it's bending down, positive when it's bending up, and so on. So although velocity and acceleration can be sinusoidal like this, they're going to be shifted horizontally time. So that's, generally speaking, what we mean by simple harmonic motion. Harmonic means it's sinusoidal. Simple means it just goes up and down like this. And then uh, uh, we have some equations that can go with this. So there's a little box at the end here. And so position has a cosine. In front of it is this big letter A. We call that the amplitude. That's what A stands for. And this is true for any simple harmonic motion system. Uh, omega is our old friend omega t. I'll get to the reason why we can think about this a little bit later on. And then phi is some other phase. We call omega t plus phi, the stuff inside this cosine, we call that the phase. Now you go to the velocity, turns out instead of cosine, you get a sine with a minus on it, and an extra omega comes out in front. <clears throat> the phase is the same. And with the acceleration, you're back to cosine again, still have that minus, and get an omega squared. So when we do plots of it, this one will go to plus a down to minus a, this will go from minus a omega up to plus a omega, and that will go from minus a omega squared up to plus a omega squared. So the maximum acceleration is actually a omega squared if the amplitude is a. <clears throat> so all these things are in radians. This is, this is sort of key. This phase, omega t plus phi, is radians, right? Radians per second on omega times time gives you uh, radians. So when you're calculating that cosine, you had better have your calculator in radians mode. That's important. <clears throat> Other things that are going to show up a lot <clears throat> are a thing called the period. Well, let's go one below that. The omega is 2 pi times f. f is frequency in cycles per second. So cycles is a unit, unlike radians. There are 2 pi radians per cycle. So that 2 pi in front of the 2 pi f is just radians per cycle. And uh, we call them cycles rather than revolutions here because it's not necessarily something going around. And so that relation ties, gets you the frequency f. If we normally call f hertz, cycles per second. That's what you tune your radio to. Or maybe you heard about other things in hertz, like your cell phone being around. 2.4 gigahertz, that's the hertz. The giga is 10 to the nine. If you take one over that frequency in hertz, one over F, you get the period T, that's how long it takes to do one cycle. Those equations on the left, in fact, all these equations, they have to be ready to pull out and use. And that's the key thing to be able to do to solve problems on simple harmonic motion systems. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, I've already told you about the max values, there they are there, and so here's some skills you need to develop to use these things. Uh, first, you have to be able to write the trig function when we say it in words. Uh, second, if we give you the equation, you have to be able to uh, uh, extract things like the maximum value, extract omega, extract the zero time. And if we give you a sinusoidal plot of it, you have to be able to pull out stuff to build the equation back. So either words to equation, equation to these values. And when we ask you a value, we may ask you for the 
period. <clears throat> and you look at the equation, equation, you can pull an omega out of that, right? This thing in front of T inside the phase. So you pull out that omega, then you use uh, divided by two pi to get the frequency, and you invert it to get the period. So you have to use those other equations that we had on the right there. Um, those ones up in the upper left there, t is one over f, those things have to be ref and ready as well. Uh, <clears throat> so first we move over here, and this means we've got to switch to our other camera. But before we do this, I want to take a step back and show you a demonstration on why that x of t should have a cosine and a sine in it. And that's where we're off to at this point. Okay, so here's the idea. Start with uniform circular motion, get to harmonic oscillations. It might seem strange to you, but what is uniform circular motion? Uniform circular motion, we have an axis, we go around something at a certain pace. And I even brought something here that will do that. If we look at just this knob here, it goes around. If I turn it at a constant rate, it goes down at a uniform circular motion. Now what happens if instead of looking at it from the top, I look at it from the side, right? Now here it is, it goes left, goes to top, zero, love minimum, negative, zero, maximum positive, somewhere in the middle, zero, and it goes around. And that actually is a sinusoidal variation. If I go to y, turn it this way, again, y is the same. But look at this. If I stop this at um, y is equal to zero, down here, say, and I bring it up to x, x is a maximum. So when x is a maximum, y is equal to zero. So let's think about this and where it takes us. <clears throat> so if we look from the side, uh, we see x as a projection. And if you really think about this, we're in a circle here at a point right there. And this is x, and this is y. And I call this theta. And this radius, we'll say, is a. <clears throat> then uh, uh, I, can get, um, I can get the x component right here, right? x is equal to uh, a cosine theta. And the y part over here is equal to a sine theta. That's static. A little bit later in time, actually we should probably make this go this way because that's positive. Positive uh, omega. <clears throat> so let's assume that we're right here at t equals zero then it's all x, no y, and then we go around this at a speed omega. So uh, you travel around at omega, or which is equal to 2 pi f, right? So a certain frequency of going around, the period of going around, t is 1 over f, right? Those those equations that you have to have right with you, so I put them here so they're with us. Then um, my theta is equal to omega times time. And so I can just plug that in up here. And I get x is equal to a cosine of omega t and y is equal to a sine omega t. Now you might ask, what about that phi I saw in those equations? And then I can say, well, if it didn't start it on the x-axis, you correct by adding a phi. And phi can be negative or it can be positive, x equal to a 
cosine omega t plus phi. And phi just gives us a, basically a time offset to wherever it took to catch up to where it is at zero. So that it gets us from the idea of a projection of uniform circular motion uh, right into this equation. So if you actually look straight down this and turn it the right way, what you see, this projection going this way and that way, that is cosine omega t plus v. And so, because that's what you get, right? <clears throat> and that is exactly what we have from our equations. So this is, I think, a nice way to sort of slowly work your way into the idea of uh, what's going on. So here I have it. There's a cosine omega t. That's x. That is the same as that. That's why this is kind of a nice analogy to think about what does a sign really look like as it's changing. It looks like something going around in a circle and theta, which is just our angle from here, theta is omega t, right? t gets bigger, it gets get bigger and bigger and bigger as we wrap this around every time. Every time omega t goes 2 pi, we get back to where we started again. It just keeps growing and growing and growing as we run around the circle. And then the components look like this or like that. Right? <clears throat> okay, good. So I've annotated that plot that we saw in the picture. A couple other things you should be thinking about is to terms of what's really going on here. All right, here's our, <clears throat> here's our um, path that this mass is taking, right? And you notice it repeats itself. If we start right here at zero, go up, back down here, or back to where we were. Because this is velocity going up, going up here, then we go to velocity down. So this part isn't the same as that. That velocity was up here, it's down. So here the V is up. Here it's down, here it's up. So these aren't the same, but those are. And in fact, this sort of repeats itself. And so that's why we call that period from here to here, which we can shift, it goes top to top, it goes bottom to bottom, it goes zero cross and zero crossing of each type. And we usually say, well, crest to crest is easiest to measure, that's the period. Because this is in time, that'll be a time there. We can get the frequency from that, it's one over. Uh, but also, you think about what's going on with the spring. This point here at zero, the symmetry point, half up, half below. Remember the uh, amplitude A is here, and then there's another amplitude A over here, right? So it actually swings by 2A, A on the minus side, A on the plus side. <laughs> this is the equilibrium here. That's right where we normally have x equals zero. So this is x equals zero. When we pull one way, potential energy goes up, velocity goes down. So it slows down, slows down, stops right at the top, and then it speeds back up. So right at the top point here, it's all potential energy, max potential energy. At this corner, it's zero, no spring potential energy. It's all kinetic energy. So we're going from kinetic energy to potential energy, to kinetic energy to potential energy, to kinetic energy to potential energy, and so on as we go through this. So each cycle, each period, you go from say potential to kinetic, potential to kinetic, potential. <clears throat> it's not just one to the other, you have to do it twice to get through the, you have to turn around. <clears throat> so uh, that's another way to think about it in terms of energy and actually what's going on in this system. And this is typical of oscillating systems that you do go from kinetic to potential, kinetic to potential and back and back and forth. This is one particular spring. We'll do a little bit more on that one uh, later on. But I wanted to talk to you about um, the equations first. I've circled some things here. Uh, S is for simple. It's just have a frequency, one frequency. And it's related to that one through this radial frequency, cycles per time frequency, or hertz. Uh, there's no units on anything inside here because we can't put units in cosine. We learned that early on. That means you need radians. And so inside here, uh, no units. Let me put a big line down here. <clears throat> no units is radians. So set 
calculator to radians. And then turn it back if you need degrees. This is one of the common problems you're going to have now is you'll set your calculator radians for this, and then you forget to turn it back to degrees when you're projecting a vector and okay, vectors do an angle in degrees, right? So you need degrees for those degrees, need radians if it's in radians. You have to remember to set it back and forth and check. If you don't, if you had set the wrong way, you'll get random answers and you'll have no idea why it's not what you thought it should be. So whenever you're doing sines and cosines and get an answer and it doesn't look quite right, go back and make sure you're set to radians if you need radians and degrees if you need degrees. Right? Given an angle in degrees, putting it in here, degree mode. Given omega t, radian mode. Uh, I'll remind you a few times as we go through this, but that is uh, sort of uh, key to what's going on. Now, the other thing we had here is skills and applying equations that you need to know. <clears throat> okay, um, when the oscillation begins at maximum amplitude, P is zero, it's cosine. Uh, and when we're talking about full equations, these equations will have numbers in them. And so you'll be able to pull out the number. It won't say omega t, it'll say some number times t. And you have to know what that number means. And you do that by comparing to uh, one of these, right? <clears throat> that number out in front is this, this, or this, depending on what you're looking at. The omega's in here. Sometimes there'll be 2 pi times a number. That's trying to hint that it should be 2 pi f. Um, and then a plot. So let's sort of go through these in order so that we can see uh, what is what. So we'll start with one of the first type ones. And that is, we're given a um, equation for, uh, in words, and we've got to come up with an expression. And then we have to pull out of that expression uh, what is the speed of the system? Okay, speed, that means we want which one? We want this one, we want v of t is equal to minus a omega sine omega t. All right, now let's look and see what we have in this. It's, uh, it's released, we better put a omega t plus phi in here, right? <clears throat> Okay, released from rest. What does released from rest means? It means at t equals zero, v equals zero. Okay, so since this is a sine, sine of zero equals zero, that means phi has to be zero. Okay, so phi is equal to zero, with the sign that starts from rest. So this is the from rest with the sign. <clears throat> uh, okay, next is a period of two seconds. Period of two seconds. Uh, that means t equals two seconds, f equals one over t is equal to um, one half hertz, that's cycles per second, and omega is equal to uh, two pi f, which is equal to pi radians per second. Okay, so we've got pi radians per second, amplitude of eight centimeters, so that just runs right down here. Uh, omega, that's the pi radians per second. Uh, T is 4.2 seconds. And so, uh, the um, we have now 
v at 4.2 seconds, you might as well put it in, that's what time is, right? Is equal to minus eight centimeters pi radians per second. We can drop the uh, uh, radians, well, I'll leave it for now. And then the sine of uh, 4.2 pi radians. Okay, see that radian in here? Radians mode. That's what that means. Put 4.2 pi in and see the radian here is a non-unit. We can just drop that. You get centimeters per second. Uh, if you sort of plug and chug, then you get um, this to be equal to um, uh, in magnitude, uh, if you actually want to put it in your calculator, you get minus 14.8 centimeters per second. But the magnitude is speed is uh, plus, and so it's this one. Okay, so that is how we um, solve one of these things. Let's uh, solve another one. And this is of type two, which is to say uh, the, um, we're given an equation, we want the angular frequency of the system. And so you take a look at this and you say, well, this isn't so hard, is it? <clears throat> uh, what we can do to show you isn't hard is we can write this down as minus a omega uh, cosine. It could be sine as well. It's just a matter of the phi offset there. Um, omega t uh, plus phi meters per second. And so uh, if you go to a, a sign here, then this conversion here amounts to a plus or minus pi over two shift in B. That's why we don't really care which one is here. It's, it's inside B. And in this problem here, we want the angular frequency. Angular frequency is omega. There it is. There it is. And so it's relatively straightforward to, once you put the letters equation next to the numbers equation, to pick out what you want. Now we could have asked you for the period, in which case you'd have to go, okay, we have to go from mega to frequency, frequency to period. Or we could ask you what the amplitude of the motion was. And then 0.5 is A times omega, right? And so um, that would be another, uh, step that we could take. In fact, let's take a couple of these steps. <clears throat> Same thing. What's the frequency of the system in hertz? Well, I won't write it out this time. This is omega is equal to 4.0 and uh, radians per second. There's radians in there and uh, we assume t is in seconds. And now we'll use the old um, Omega is equal to two pi f. So f is equal to omega divided by two pi is equal to four radians per second divided by two pi, which is, is um, radians per cycle. All right, so the radians cancel cycles on the bottom of the bottom become the top, so it's cycles per second. And it's two divided by pi cycles per second and two divided by pi is equal to, uh, let's see, that's about two thirds around 0.64, sounds good, equals 0.64 hertz, because cycles per second is hertz, spelled out hertz. 
It's nothing to do with the rental car company. It has to do with the guy that studied this stuff, who's a physicist by that name a long time ago. Okay, um, we could easily, let's see, what else could we ask you? Yeah, let me ask you what the period is. What is the period? And the answer is, of course, T is period is one over F is equal to one over 0.64. Now this is in cycles per second. So this is seconds per cycle. And that's about uh, 1 1.6 uh, seconds per cycle. Now often we'll drop the per cycle. I don't know why, but when you have periods, you drop the cycle, say, oh, the period is so many seconds. You're supposed to understand that means per cycle. It's often dropped. Uh, we'll see other things drop again when you, sometimes people just drop these, sometimes they don't, but it really does have that cycle there. Okay, um, same thing again. What's the maximum displacement of the system? Well, I told you about that before, right? Uh, let's rewrite this, minus a omega um, cosine omega t plus b. And we decided this is omega. And so we pull off from this a times omega is equal to 0.5. Amplitude, maximum displacement is the amplitude, of course. Amplitude is 0 0.5 divided by omega is 0 0.5. This is actually meters per second on the, uh, that carries. Cosine doesn't have any units, remember? Hope you do. It's length divided by length. <clears throat> uh, 0 0.5 divided by um, that's meters per second, uh, divided by omega, which is four radians per second. And 0.5 divided by four is an eighth, and an eighth is equal to um, uh, 0.125. And as far as the units go, this one's over seconds canceled, radians non-unit, we're into meters. That's this one. Okay, one more. <laughs> Same equation. What is the maximum acceleration of the system? Hmm, acceleration. Better write that equation down. Acceleration function of time is equal to minus a omega squared now, if this is a cosine, it's going to probably be a sine. Uh, so I'll just write the sine of <clears throat> uh, omega t plus p. And this is in meters per second squared. And the maximum acceleration is this. And so we can write a max is equal to a omega squared, which is equal to uh, amplitude we just found was 0.125 meters. Omega we had was um, four point, this is omega here, right? Uh, so it's, four squared radians squared per second squared. <clears throat> so that's 16 times an eighth, it's two. Um, 
two meters per second squared. Radians, remember, is the non-unit. So we can drop when we want to. We can add it when we want to, although it's not always useful to add it. And that gives us our, um, our um, <clears throat> final value here of, um, of uh, 2, which is answer B. Might as well circle that. And then we go on to this. The final task, final thing you need to be able to do is to take a plot that looks like this and identify things from it. So this is time. So the period is from this to when it gets back to what it is, so up going, crossing zero again. So we know that this is the period. That's T. So T we read off is 0 0.4 seconds. And what else do we have here? Um, we want the position amplitude of the system. Okay, well, that sounds good. What's A? Um, well, we don't know what A, but we know what A max is. A max is equal to two meters per second squared, and that's equal to A omega squared, right? And position amplitude, that's A. So this is what we want. So, <clears throat> A is equal to uh, A max over omega squared, which we don't have omega, but we have T. So if T is this, then F is equal to one over 0.4 hertz, and omega is equal to two pi over 0.4 radians per second, because this remember two pi radians per cycle, that two pi has units, they're just hidden. Why don't we write the per cycle? Because sometimes we don't. The radians, of course, you never had to write. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, 20 over four or five pi radians per second, it's a little easier to write. <clears throat> and so as we plug this in, A max is two meters per second squared, And we just got omega, so got to square it, 25 pi squared, radians squared per second squared. The per second squareds come off, radians non-unit, end up with meters, that's what we want. Plug in two, divide it by 25 pi squared, and you get um, 0 0.0081 meters. So <clears throat> the um, so we've done all three things, and just keep in mind if you have around uh, your handy dandy set of uh, of equations here, <clears throat> you'll need those. Be prepared to use them. You'll need these. And then it's just a matter of knowing how to put numbers into these, how to get these with numbers and pull the letters out, convert if you need to, and how to take a picture and pull, you know, period out of it. And from that, get omega and F, and maybe you have enough to plug into these things and get what you need to. You can also get the amplitude off the picture where the maximum X is simply A, the maximum V and T, well, they're, they're scaled. You have to correct for that, like we did here. This is one of the hardest cases to correct for here that we were doing. <clears throat> uh, and so those are the types of things you need to be able to do. At least you're not projecting vectors, right? <clears throat> okay, that ends this unit. And so I will... Um,